So did you know that there are seven levels of intimacy? And she was just like, nah, like what are they? And I just, I ran them off to her. Most people will put physical, physical intimacy on the back burner when you're in a healthy relationship a lot of times because it's something that you actually have to be much more intentional with than what you give it credit for. I don't think most guys have that type of open line of communication with their women. So it's harder to communicate emotionally, you know? And guys are still, you know, figuring out how to navigate this world in a masculine state of mind, but still be open and vulnerable with their per person, person mm -hmm. without compromising the masculinity. Mm -hmm. That's a hard place. I feel it's equally, we have equal responsibility for all levels of intimacy. Mm -hmm. Right. That to me, that's the only way that it works for both of us. Right. For us to have a successful relationship is I can't be pouring into one and she's not pouring into it. When is the last time you can say you were curious about your partner or your partner is curious about you and it impressed you? I'm Simeon Pando. Hey. I'm Melvin Gregg. This is another episode of Nice and Me. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. Yeah. Welcome back to another episode. I'm pretty sure we got some new people I never heard this before. Never heard it. They're like, what is this? The intro. Okay, okay, okay. Uh -huh. Yo, what's the deal? Y'all hope all is well. Welcome back to another episode. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. Welcome back to the number one podcast in all of Los Angeles. Nice and neat. What's going on, my brothers? How y'all doing? What's the dilly, bro? Hey, man, it's good. It's good to see you guys. I get you guys got me in this uh this 1970s you got drug dope suit. Boy. You got to tell dope boy suit on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good though. It's all hey, good. You guys look like, nice. I'd have paid a fool. You guys look nice. I wanted to um we 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 gonna be running with a good topic today, so I wanted to be prepared for this. Okay. You know, I okay. wanted to be prepared for this. Um. Recently, man, we did Men's Con um, a little over a month ago. And at Men's Con, we had a relationship professional come out and she spoke about intimacy. And I thought intimacy was like, it was like super dope, right? Just the fact that she broke down the, le the levels of intimacy. She told us that there's six levels of in intimacy, but she also introduced the seventh one, right? So I'll run through them, right? Um, first level intimacy, um will be emotional intimacy right then you have financial intimacy spiritual intimacy recreational intimacy intellectual physical and then the new one that she introduced was professional intimacy right i noticed that we have these seven intimacies and i brought it to my, i brought it to Brittany. i said babe so did you know that there are seven levels of intimacy and she was just like nah like what are they and i just i ran them off to her and I said, let's do a let's do an interesting um, exercise. I said, within our relationship, let's number from strongest to most needed to work on in order. Let's put them in order, right? And we put them in order, and we were actually like pretty pretty like spot on. But one thing that came on to me was our physical intimacy was lacking. We just had a son. You know, our, that that's not necessarily where it was at, right? So we started talking about that. And within our production meeting, we were talking about what physical intimacy looks like and what do you do to continue to spice that up? And what do you do to make sure that that is on the forefront of you guys' minds as you guys are trying to build life and build businesses and build partners and build healthy children together? What does that look like, right? I thought it was real interesting to see that most people will put physical physical intimacy on the back burner when you're in a healthy relationship a lot of times because it's something that you actually have to be much more intentional with than what you give it credit for. I think physical has came so easy that we thought it would always come easy and that may not necessarily always be the case. We talk about it as well, fellas and making sure that we can pursue our woman through the day so the nightcap can turn into a nightclap, right? Okay. So with that being said, I want to know from you, Duke, when we talk about flirty and we talk about making sure that your woman <clears throat> feels sought after, right? That's easy for you to dive into. But what are some of the things that your woman does to you that make you feel sought after and it makes you want to chase her? 
even more than you already do. What are some things that she does that makes me want to chase her? Mm. Man, it's so interesting, bro. We, I mean, kitchen work is always there, right? Like kitchen work where, you know, I'm cooking or she cooking or, you know, she, I, she may be cooking. I'll, I'll try to get to like the, the cups and stuff and she may just like move in my way just to, so I can run into her cheeks. Oh, so you can rub against that thing. Yeah, yeah. So, rub so, against that thing. So, so that things thing. like that kind of, hey, it's like, like hey, a, what you doing? It's like What's a playful, <laughs> you know, it's like a playful, uh, you know, like a playful flirt, you know, or I may get in from the gym and she was like, okay, I see you. Like something like that, just compliment me. Um, it's just my, my girl always let me know she checked for me, you know? So um, just in just random moments or or I'll be working in the garage or something, I'll be building stuff, right? And she was like, oh, I, hey, my man's so sexy, shit like that, you know? So it let me know that, you know, she's still, she's still checking for me, but just like it, it's reaffirming, you know, it's affirming. It's like, yo, know, this person still finds me attractive. I'll take care of myself. You know what I'm saying? I know I'm attractive, but still you want to see, you want to know that and feel that from your partner. Mm -hmm. And um, especially from your woman, right? Because I don't know, there's a stigma that says that women, I feel like a lot of, a lot of men be complaining that they women don't really like them like that, you know, like attracted to them, you know, like they feel like they got to, they're the ones who's always seeking sex. You know, they feel like they got to jump through hoops and their women to withhold sex from them and stuff like that. You're right. But I don't really feel like with us, man, I feel like she just always makes it clear that, like, I got the green light. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, that, that just having that thought process and just understanding, you know, I just it always makes me feel like, OK, we good. Mm -hmm. You know, even though we busy sometimes and sometimes you do get into just a flow and monotony of relationship. You know, you just love someone and it's other things take precedence, right? She's on her cycle. Um, you know, we got marriage counseling or we got some other stuff going on. So things get in the way, right? We got businesses. But she's always letting me know that, hey, listen, like this is a priority to me, right? I never felt like it's something that she just is dreading or anything like that, you know? And uh, yeah, so I can't relate to a lot of other guys, but I think she's always constantly showing me. And then she, another thing, Here's what she does a lot. She's like, hey, yo, we need time together to just watch TV. I just want to spend time with you. Can we cuddle? I'm like, yeah, let's do it for sure. Right. So she's always and that's a good place to be when your woman is seeking. Like she wants to cuddle with you and wants to spend time with you and like personal time. That's a good place to be. So mm -hmm. that shit makes me feel like, OK. Like the spark is still there, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So. Okay, okay. So everything in the end, not your household, is perfect. No, <laughs> no, e everything. No, 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 not at all. Okay. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> everything not, is perfect. You're sought after. She's sought all. after. Everybody not gets it. You know. Nah, not at all. We not get it. She's Omar. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real, that's no, that's that's dope. That's dope. That those things are that clear um, to where there is no confusion. Omar, you just, re you, you had a daughter a little over six months ago and in that space and trying to navigate being a parent, a new parent, and also being a, a new husband, mm -hmm. you know, less than two years being mm -hmm. a new husband. What is that like? What, what is that like for you? Yeah. Good question. Good question. It's a, uh... It for me, I feel like my responsibility at, in this season is to reaffirm my wife so she could gain regain her confidence. You know, any woman has had a baby knows will understand what I'm talking about right now. You know, a woman could still feel pretty, still feel attractive, still feel beautiful, but not feel as sexy as she once felt. You know what I mean? And so every day, every month that goes by as we're if she's, you know, going through postpartum, you know what I mean? And trying to work herself back. It's just about me reaffirming my woman, you know what I mean? And telling her that she looks great, telling her that she looks sexy, telling her that her ass is still fat, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And overemphasizing it sometimes, you know what I mean? Sometimes to the point where she look back like, I, it ain't even like that. I don't know, why are you saying that? But having to go the extra mile because it's a delicate space that we're in. I want my woman to bounce back to who she who she once was, you know what I mean? And I think it would be very hard for her to do that without 
the affirmation the aff affirm wise, so yeah like, from, from me yeah. from her partner mm -hmm. from the one person that matters the most in the house that sees her in her most vulnerable state you know what i mean and is still able to compliment her so for me it's just been it's been that you know what i mean and I, i'll be honest you know luckily i have um my mom around and she's she's been able to just kind of observe you know what i mean and she's able to drop her two cents in as just a, as an additional woman that's around like hey you know you should let her know you know that she, yep. she, she's doing a great job you know what i mean like i, I know you know so just tell her you know what i mean and hearing those type of things because my mom has told me that twice actually and uh you know i and, and i agree i'm like that's exactly where i need to be at right now for my woman for my wife you know what i mean i need to be super super supportive uh so she could so she could get her sexy back you know mm -hmm. what i mean and in her eyes right because she's still sexy to me and mine she ain't never stopped being sexy yeah right but it's about her being confident in her skin you know what i mean and even though that's her job right it's still my job as her husband mm -hmm. to be supportive and to help her and to lift her up you know what I mean? even in times when she doesn't feel like it so that's where that's really where i'm at in this season you know what i mean but if you're talking about not this season and how i get down you know what i mean and how it goes for me foremost for me to like remain sexy and attractive and desirable in my woman's eyes you know i'm never gonna get out of shape i'm gonna always be in the gym you know what i mean i'm gonna stay getting my hair cut once a week mm -hmm. right um i'm gonna do the things that i need to do to stay groomed right make sure my teeth are cleaned um and i'm also gonna i'm gonna be i'm gonna always walk around and something that she know what time it is when we at the house i always got my gray sweats on I always got, I got on pants. I ain't got no drawers on. <laughs> yeah. I'm just being real. That's, that's, that's when you're ready to go. It's one of those nights. It, it's, are you, are you that's like that every it. night? It's I'm like that. that every, it's like that every night. Cause every night I'm ready to go. If she ready. Right. Mm -hmm. And whenever she is ready, I'm, I'm not gonna have to get ready. You okay. know what I mean? So, and also too, it's just like sidebar, like let y'all nuts breathe. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let 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 let, let, let y'all nuts breathe, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be in the boxer briefs eighteen hours a day, man. I'll be one hundred with you. A, a pair of boxer briefs ain't been on my body going to bed. <laughs> gotta get them off. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah nah. Uh, I, like unless I'm coming out of the house. Exactly. Exactly. Unless I'm coming out of the house, you work from home. And I, I will say though, from her perspective too, it's like I know the things that she does to make herself feel sexy and desirable to me too. Right, because she'll do. That's a, good, that's a good place to be. She'll okay. do things like fake drop the remote so she could bend over and pick it up. You know what I mean? And okay. as she, and as she picking it up, it's it's hella seductive. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, I love I love when my wife school her booty on me like, you know when they turn that to the yeah. side, they uh, throw that thing on you. The scoochie, the school scoot, the school scooch. Yeah, when she gets that scooch, scooch, I know what time it is. Scooch, and scooch. even if and even if it's not go time, I know it's time to rub. It's time to be physically intimate, even yeah, though we yeah. may not have yeah, intercourse. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Like I, I know, so I'm able to recognize those those kind of things. Physical intimacy is something that uh, me and Brittany has been more proactive in and understanding, just to the point of what you said. Outside of it actually being intercourse, intercourse. It's like we're touching. Mm -hmm. We are looking eye to eye. Holding hands. We are holding hands. Mm -hmm. You know, we're massaging. We watching TV and I'm rubbing her feet. Mm -hmm. You know, just but just showing your partner like I'm here, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, there's gonna be those nights where you guys sit next to each other and you'll be on each other's on on the phone. But like that just can't be the norm all the time. Mm -hmm. So right. There's so many like we uh, I was telling her, I said, babe, we need to just literally start running our relationship like a business. And we need to hit all of these points and not just keep it in the monotony, but like understanding like, hey, yo, you're satisfied? You getting this? You get, okay, hey, yo, we need to make sure we tap into emotional intimacy. Let's do it. What does yeah. it look like? What does it feel like? Mm -hmm. the intellectual intimacy, you got something you want to talk about right now? Matter of fact, so like even in okay. the, the space of being intellectual, yep. right? We defined it within our relationship is just making sure you stay curious about your partner. Passionately. Passionately, yeah. right? But that's the space now where you could bring up something that you know may kind of, it could ruffle a feather, but when you're curious, it won't because you're not looking at it through that lens of a partner, right? You're looking through it a lens of just a friend who is curious. Like, hey, you know, you said something. Um, what exactly did you mean by that when you said that? 
rather than what did you mean by that? Mm-hmm. Those are two totally different tones, two totally different spaces. And I think it's fair to give your partner a space to not be your partner sometimes. Just be my friend. Just be the person that exists. And and we're and and I'm curious about your thought process, your mm-hmm. mind, who you're growing into. And we had Eric Bellinger on and him saying that he stays curious about his girl in the space of like, yo, she's not who I met. And you will never learn that if you don't stay curious. If you kind of mm-hmm. uphold your person to who it is that you met him as, there's that curiosity can exist. Yeah. Right. So in that, right. When is the last time you can say you were curious about your partner or your partner is curious about you and it impressed you? Um, man, this week, this week, I mean, we've been hitting on all cylinders. We're firing. Think, okay. I don't know. I, I, okay. Just, I, I, I knew the house was perfect. We, we talked bro, about we, that. We talked about yeah, that. We've we been hitting, that. bro. We've been hitting lately, man. I, I'm, I don't know, bro. We've been hitting. This, this shit like new right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? It's that therapy. It's it's like. The third party. It's man. that third party. Man, the, hey. it, it, it is the, hey. the last session we went to, bro. The last session we went to, man, and it was probably like our our best one most eye-opening one and we just broke through like a different ceiling Mm -hmm. i think and um yeah dog for sure it's just been a just a a different type of even just like the trip to mexico just like everything has just been like better you know and i was just telling her yesterday i was like yo like we've been really we good but like we just feel different she was like yeah it's a trip that's why you gotta take me on the trip, <laughs> change the scenery. But um, Jeez, that's a real thing. But just a lot of things. But before we get to that, though, what are what are the things that you show, Brittany? What what are the things you guys show each other that lets you guys know, yo, I'm ready for you? Physically. Physically. Man, my my, I have such a classic woman that she is so subtle that I was like, oh, I have to study my partner to really understand. It's really when I'm flirting, how hard she flirts back. Hmm. So, for example, I was looking in the cabinet or I was looking in the kitchen. She said, I don't know what you in here looking for. And I was like, girl, I'm looking for you. I ain't looking for nothing else. (laughs) 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 Right? So when she's when when she's in that space, I know what's up. You look like Bill Cosby when you did that. I could I could see I could see though like, and that's another thing. Like my I realize my girl just really like game. Like when I'm kicking game to my girl, she just come on. She loves it. Like she whether it's Play. whether it's we talking about something that we could use to improve the house. Whether it's we talking about. I'm just I'm gaming her up and just letting her know how I feel about her, how she look. She loves it. She eats it up. Whenever we're in that space, she's ready to go. It's, 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 she's always ready to go in that space. The only time where I'll say it's like, ah, is if I would just wait it to it till it's too late. Mm-hmm. If it's 12, 30, 1 in the morning, and I'm just like, yo, like, hey, what's going on? It's like, babe, did you ask me so I could say no? Because I'm tired right now, right? Did you ask me so I could say no? Right? Wow. So that was a that was a that was the thing too we we spoke about within our relationship. It's just like I be, I be respectful of 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 what you see my 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 cadence is. If you see I had an entire day, it's twelve thirty. You got out of the shower after me. I'm here asleep. Like, come, come on. on, don't make me the bad guy. Don't make me the bad guy here. Like, let's be realistic. Now I'll tell you this: if it's twelve thirty, I get out of the shower and I still see her up on her phone. That's her letting me know what's up. Yep, she would have been asleep. Yep. That's her letting, but these are these are things from just studying my partner, just like paying attention, like, oh, okay, cool. Cause like I feel actually that we will be more vocal with the lack of intimacy, the lack of sex, not intimacy. We'll be more vocal with the lack of sex than they will be. Cause if it comes up, then they're gonna be like, hey yo, we actually like I I I offered it here, I did it here, I gave you the pass here. I smile back at you there. I walked upstairs and looked back here and it's just like, oh, I didn't even pick it up. I think one of the most difficult parts, um, and I think the reason why couples struggle with uh, sexual intimacy is because you guys are in such a constant state of building all the time. And you want to grow these businesses and you want to build in so many other areas 
that that's just like cool at the end of the night we'll get to that and then the most most of the time when you wait to do something at the end of the day it just yeah, doesn't happen don't do it. <laughs> you don't do it yeah so i think in being very very intentional with all of your intimacy points is super important and i'm not just putting that on us as men i feel like women have to play their part as well in being intimate physically yeah. and emotionally and all of these different ways and and i know we were talking about physical intimacy but when I said emotional intimacy, one thing that's interesting to me is as I see time goes on and men continue to progress um, and we start getting emotionally mature men, women have to be ready for what emotional intimacy looks like coming from men. Because when we can articulate ourselves and we can say when something made us feel some way, don't look at it as an attack on you. Understand this is just how something made me feel. Mm -hmm. Our parents, our fathers, and I've talked to my dad about this. Our fathers knew how to do the right thing. They didn't even know how they felt. So they couldn't even speak on their feelings. We now are in a space where we could speak on our feelings and actually articulate it without it being combative. It's just like, hey, this made me feel this way when you did this and I didn't feel like I deserved that. It's like, well, she, you made me feel this way. That's not, that's not emotional intimacy. I need you to receive me. Mm -hmm before you tell me exactly how you felt. Yep. Right? So honestly, when it comes to our physical intimacy, one another thing, like you said, that I understand when my partner is ready is when emotionally we're firing on all cylinders. Mm -hmm. When we're firing on all cylinders emotionally, it's good. It's, it's good. Mm -hmm. the, the, the door is wide open. Mm -hmm. And when we're having our conversations and I know that she's getting my one-on-one -on -one attention, we're good. Right. Right. We're good. How would someone? All right. So you you in a relationship with a woman, or some other guy, right? How would a woman? Let's say the guy is not as. He's just not as he's not someone who's a great initiator, or maybe he's just going through a lot of stress, or whatever the case. But he's just not in the mode right now where he's the one that's initiating, right? How would a woman kind of push the needle? Sex. Yes, yeah, se sexually. Like, what are some things that you? would recommend a woman push the needle on like how would that how would that show up she wants to have it and he's not in the space too M maybe he is in the space too but uh -huh. he's just he's just not initiating he's just not initiating she has to speak his language because i think a lot of women would do it the way that they know how to do it mm -hmm. she'll literally have to speak his language mm -hmm. so if he is a hey i just need it right now kind of guy like you going to go hop in the shower when you kind of see that moment happen and you breaking that moment from him huh. could, could could actually put more of a lack of confidence on him because he's just like man i was i was up, ready i was ready i was ready in that moment and yeah. now you know we was kissing and uh, and then and while we were kissing she's like oh let me go get in the shower and he's just like nah but like i already love you like i don't need this freshest version of you yeah, yeah. right so, sometimes now. sometimes just building that momentum and being able to know that this moment can happen at any time is greater for the next time Yes. It, it sets, sets up the next time. It, it does. It does. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, right? No, and, and you know, to, to that point, you could go shower a few times after that. But yeah. like sometime, like let's say, let's say you and your partner, it's been two two weeks plus, right? And you guys haven't been able to have um, that connection, right? On that level. And you guys are kissing and it's getting hot. And then, you know, she says like, hey, I need to go get in the shower, right? You could be like, dang. Was it gonna happen? Like I don't know. Your confidence could be broken. Uh -huh. Let's say flip side, you guys are kissing and it's getting hot and it goes down. You like, oh man, it's four thirty in the afternoon. It's happening. Oh, she's down. Whenever, whenever, however. I think it's so important for your partner to always feel spontaneity. Mm -hmm. Like you don't want your partner to just get used to like, okay, well, eleven thirty, he's gonna come in and you know he's gonna when he get out of the shower, then he's gonna get on top of me and turn off all the lights. Ah, uh. nah. So like, if only time we can have sex is when you fresh out of the shower, that gets boring. Like mm -hmm. you appreciate the spontaneity of of what's going on because that's not what we was on when we first met. It wasn't. Let me go get an hour shower that we share. Nah, it was like, hey, yo, we getting it cracking right here. Thank you. Right now. So, right? Right now. Yeah, I think that shower is a preference too. It's not a necessity. That shower right there. Hey, let me step, let me step in the shower real quick. I think it's just a, I prefer to get in the shower. I know you prefer to get in the shower. 
Mm-hmm. I, prefer, I prefer it right now. I, I know you prefer to get in the shower, right? But like, I mean, you're not, you didn't come from a workout. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You didn't come from the gym. Like, you didn't come from, you wasn't in the mud playing around. Hey, I'm going to pause you right there. Let's say it's the morning and she did come from a workout. You needed that. And if I came from the workout, we're going to get it in. What if you didn't have it come from the workout? But you, I'm gonna have to but respect you her. want it. But you I'm going to have to respect though. her, though, because okay. I'm, I'm going to have to respect her on that because I understand that she wants to feel sexy in that moment. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. I understand yep. that because that's a big extreme. Yep. But sometimes the day just been happening mm-hmm. and you didn't really sweat like that, but you still want to be fresh for sex. Mm-hmm. You know, in that case, it's just like, hey, look, you ain't got to be the freshest. I'm not the freshest right now. I understand how, how this shit work. Right. And like, let's just get it off right now. And then you can take a shower after this. And I feel like the more moments that happens, the more you having sex. Yes. Listen, the more the more times those moments happen, the more you having sex, the more. 10 minutes happen hey we don't need time we don't need a lot of time oh you got something to do in an hour cool let's let's get it in real quick but when it's just like ah like i got someone to be in an hour then it becomes you, you know one thing we don't really think about though because mm-hmm. we're not the one how long pause. we're not the one getting hit like cleaning yeah clean it up yeah yeah you know what i mean like the cleaning process the, the yeah, we we got we, for us. It's just a rub down. It's just a rub down. Yeah, yeah. It's just a rub down. <laughs> it's just a rub down. But also too, just like you know, like going throughout the day, like I haven't done anything, but like should I use the bathroom? You know what I mean? Like, what I you want... mean you use the bathroom? Hmm? What you mean you use the bathroom? You pissed? What you mean? I'm talking about. As, I'm talking about the women. Like you, do, you doodle? Yeah. Okay, that's what I mean. Oh, come on, bro. Like, okay. I, 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 okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. The, the thing that we don't think about because pause. I mean, we're not the ones getting hit. We be like, man, come on, let's just get it in right yeah. now. But like, there are certain things that can happen throughout the day that you just be like, like right now, just not. The, she'll be. Yeah. She'll be insecure about it. You, she'll, she'll be insecure moment. about yeah. it. You know what I mean? Which takes away from her sexiness. Which takes away from the moment. Yeah. So that's true. In in all fairness, in, in their defense, man, sometimes you know I get it. Yeah. I was just saying that moment, that space where you get to decide whether you want to break the flow because you want to take a shower, right, or keep the flow going. The deciding to keep the flow going is going to do more for the relationship mm-hmm. than that shower will. Yeah. That's a fact. The shower is going to do a lot for you in the moment, but if you just keep the flow going, it's going to mm-hmm. do way more for the relationship, mm-hmm. right? It's going to be a compound effect, bro, because you're going to be like, oh, okay, cool. We just had, like, this was like a, um, like a, 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 like a no pressure type of such situation where we just had sex quick, efficient, right? But it was, it was productive. And we just know that, okay, cool. We, in a drop of a dime, we can get it in. And those micro yeah moments yeah if you have no uh, enough of those micro moments you won't even have to you won't have to make sex a big thing mm-hmm. yeah because if like and for a man if you feel like you have to plan it all the time and you got to roll out the red carpet you just be like oh we're just not gonna do it I'm right good. now okay we're just not gonna do it right now okay to that point right what do we always say all right if i want to be consistent in the gym i gotta make it easy yep i gotta simplify things mm-hmm. to, to do it all the time once I start convoluting it with, okay, I got to drive to this gym. I got to do this. But that requires a plan. What requires a plan? Being consistent. It requires a plan. And plans don't always work with with sex. Yes. It's but, not, it don't hit but, the same. But, but, it's not going to have, a, it's not going to yield the same results. Yes. But c- making it, making it to be consistent, making it easy though. Right. So like removing any as many obstacles as possible that's what i'm trying to mm-hmm. say you know and sometimes you know the planning it to be perfect us having this scheduled time although we should be intentional about always having sex but we should have our foundation and eh? we will make sure we have sex once a week or whatever the case may be but when we have those moments to have sex like let's just forget about everything and take them mm-hmm. and then like fix everything else after it yep you know what i mean mm-hmm. To to that point, this is this is great. I'm I love that we're talking about this. If we could put physical intimacy on the back burner, right? Let's say the wife comes to you, you sitting on the couch, you chilling. You sitting on the couch, you chilling, and you guys kind of start getting into a conversation. Conversation starts getting good, and she's like, "Babe," and then I really want to tell you how I feel about this. And then you say, "Hey, yo, actually, let me go and do this." right quick that was not a part of anything we were doing right now and then i'll get back to this 
How do you think that would do for you guys' emotional intimacy? It'd be bad. It'd be yeah. bad. She would feel um, not important, not valued in that in that moment. Feel right. Like she's a second. Pri she's a secondary priority to whatever it is that you have going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it it would. Uh, uh, what's the uh, the word I'm looking for? Uh, it would loosen the connection. I, I use that analogy though because I feel like men typically push for the physical intimacy. That's just that's a way that we can connect, right? And women typically push for the emotional intimacy. I feel rejected. If the shower is brought up, I feel rejected. Not necessarily saying it's a rejection, but mm -hmm. I feel rejected, mm -hmm. right? That example that I use in the emotional intimacy is not necessarily a rejection, but she can feel rejected and it could cause a little bit of the screw being loosened within the relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so important, like you're saying, is to push through like to where it's just like, hey, yo, you know what? Let's say I was about to post something and she's talking and I'm like this. How many times you was like, what were you saying? Because you understand what it means to her. Yep. I feel like when we look at intimacies, do you feel like there are, and every relationship is different within you guys' relationship, do you feel like certain intimacies fall on um, we'll call it just the masculine or the feminine within you guys' relationship. Is there, is it, do you feel like it's ever any, anyone's more responsibility to exercise that intimacy? In terms, for me personally, in my relationship, I feel it's equally, we have equal responsibility for all levels of intimacy, mm -hmm. right? That to me, that's the only way that it works for both of us, right? For us to have a successful relationship is I can't be pouring into one and she's not pouring into it. Like we equally got to be doing. Now I get it. Sometimes I may be more, she may be less. You know what I mean? At times, but I think there has to be a conscious effort, and not think there is a conscious effort in my household in all the levels of intimacy of us both coming to the table. We look at all levels of intimacy as partnership. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. we do it together. It's not solely on you, and it's never solely on me. So for us, that's what works. And I feel like I want to stick with it. I don't. I don't want to fall into. A, I don't want to walk into a situation where all of the financial um, uh, uh, intimacy falls on me. Yep. And she's not opening up about it. I don't want to be in a situation where she's the only one emotionally um, um, intimate. You yep. know what I mean? I think we both need to, to be equally intimate with each other at on all levels, so we continue growing. Uh, if not, I think we will just get stagnant. And then again, the connection is, is is loosened, and eventually we don't have any intimacy. Hmm. I think I think generally speaking, there, like the different types of intimacy are assigned to different genders. Not a hundred percent. Yeah, but yeah. Maybe the initiation of yeah, that. for sure, for sure. Like which one? Like I think financial intimacy is usually assigned to guys. And that's not saying that you you're not involved, but a lot of times you if you look in a lot, you probably look in a lot of relationships like yo, like having a discussion about budgeting is a is a financially in, it's like it's an intimate thing, right? A man is gonna probably bring to the table, hey yo, we need to save money before a woman does. It's all relative. I'm just saying. It's all relative. Right? Like we had we generally had, we had uh Charles and um Shireen. And we had Charles and Shireen on. Mm -hmm. We did a joint show with them, and she was talking about how she was telling him. Yeah, I'm only talking about like from a general standpoint, right? Um, I think usually, like, because, and it's not nothing wrong. It's just like women are just naturally big, bigger spenders, mm -hmm. right? So just more habitual spenders, more impulsive spenders, you know, more emotional spenders, right? Yeah. So like, when you decide to marry someone or be with someone, you know, that becomes a thing, right? So now it's like, hey, listen. We have to talk about that mm -hmm. because now it's us. So we have to talk about that. Now, if a man, is, if he don't bring it up, a woman ain't going to be like, hey, this is what we need to do. She's going to be like, hey, this, this, I've been doing this. It's the program. This is how I've been doing it, right? Because because in her mind, it's like, we're not really, I'm not really doing nothing wrong, right? Because it's just a habit thing. So yeah. like, it's usually going to have to come from a man to step in and say, all right, look, I know, you know, you believe in, you know, your thing, but hey, this is how I think we should operate as a unit in terms of like, talking about finances mm -hmm. you know what i mean because like honestly it's it's kind of my duty to like steer our ship our financial ship whether you know you got your shit or not it's kind of like it's going to rely on me yeah if we never talk about it yo that could be a problem you know what i mean um in terms of you know physical intimacy 
I feel like a lot of most women want to be like sought after and, and, and chased to a degree, you know? So like, they're going to look to you to lead that too. Although they can definitely help co-pilot, they're still going to want you to kind of, hey, yo, like, tell us where we're going. You know, I think that's just naturally falls on a man, you know? Um, so those two things for sure, in my opinion, are usually assigned um, to men. And then obviously you, you look at emotional intimacy. Most guys aren't just in our situation. Like most guys aren't, I don't think they're as, it's not a slight either. It's just, we, we talk to each other every day. You know, we're in a podcast, like it's different, right? So I don't think most guys have that type of open line of communication with their women. So it's harder to communicate emotionally, you know? And guys are still, you know, figuring out how to navigate this world in a masculine state of mind, but still be open and vulnerable with their per person, person mm -hmm. without compromising their masculinity. Mm -hmm. That's a hard place. So usually that emotional intimacy part of it is gonna like, it's gonna fall on the woman and not fall on the woman like it's a burden, but it's just, I'm saying like, it's gonna be assigned to a woman just by default. So mm -hmm. I don't think everything is equal. Generally speaking, I think different things usually fall to, to different people. Here's, here's why I don't think that they fall into, why I don't think it, it, it works if it falls into different people because mm -hmm. people people are humans and no one wants to feel like they're doing mm -hmm. it all the time. Mm -hmm. And if you feel like you have to do it all the time, eventually you're gonna stop doing it. Or you're gonna start doing you're gonna start doing it less. Yeah, but that's not that's not saying that um can we use taking out the trash? All right, so I'm gonna take out the trash all the time. Mm -hmm. All right. Sometimes you know may want to take out the trash if I'm not home, right? It's not like she, it's not like, um, okay, let's do this. Like Chanel m m watches dishes most of the time, mm -hmm. right? But like, you know, if, the, if I see the dishes piling up or I eat, I'm gonna wash the dishes, mm -hmm. right? But usually Chanel does that. So that's like usually a sign to her, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So it's just like, yo, we we could look at the different intimacies in the house and say, okay, this this usually do candles is usually Chanel handles this, but we all like it's our house, so we take care of the house together. Mm -hmm. So that's all I'm saying. Like, I'm not saying like you gotta even even with the physical intimacy thing, right? I'm not saying that I'm always gonna be initiating sex or being that that, that spark. I'm saying that yo, she's gonna look to you or yeah, look to me. Yeah. To kind of to like be like steer us in that direction. Duke she's isn't like, being like egregious. Yeah, yeah she's, yeah, yeah. she's like, also. I'm gonna, not walking by the dishes. Not yeah, touching. Yeah. I'm saying you need to watch. Yeah, dishes. like she's yeah. also gonna look to you to make uh like to help steer the ship financially in terms of financial decision making. Right. Hey, uh, what do you think we should do here? Mm -hmm. Right. Hey, and what do you think? Hey, you she wants to get um um she wants to pay for one thing and you want the, the other thing and you guys don't just agree. She may go with your final word. Yep. Just because, all right, you know what? I want this, but he wants this, and you know, I I trust him. So I think that's how it works. Yeah, I, I I'm 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 I think I, I side more. Actually, I think I'm in between both of where you guys would be at. I feel like everybody should definitely be participating, which I think ultimately you guys are saying the same. Yeah, thing. yeah, for sure. But like some days it may look 80, 20, some days it mm -hmm. may look 60, 40, some days it looks 50, 50, mm -hmm. right? Cause there are absolutely things where it's just like that the onus on that situation is on me. Mm -hmm. And I, and I know that like, okay, it's especially, um, it's hard to be the woman who is the initiator of sex when us as men were out all day long. Right. So in being respectful of us being out, she may be like, he's tired. Yeah. You know, I don't want to just throw myself on him as soon as he comes through the door. When he's ready, he'll initiate. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just like a, something that's historic. That's just in us. So I it may be emotions that are something that I just didn't like today that like I'm like, let me let that breathe. She's going to bring that to me. She's going to bring to me of, hey, you know, this made me feel this way. And when I felt this way. You know, I did it like this, this, and this. And it may be a vice versa in somebody else's relationship. But speaking to that, right? If somebody's in a relationship and they don't necessarily have intimacies that are kind of assigned and they're kind of like getting looked over or they're not getting touched, how do you feel like people should be able to tap into those intimacies? Wow. It, well, man, it's hard to tap into intimacies if you don't even know which ones exist, you know? So most people aren't as privy to intimacies the way we are now, by way of spicy, by way of just nice and neat. Like, I don't think people consider finance finances an intimacy. No, people are always shocked when they hear that one. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? 
So it'd be hard to even like try to touch that when I don't even know that's supposed to be a thing. When I think intimacy, when when the average man at least thinks intimacy, they think sex. Yeah. They think physical intimacy. Okay. Romance type shit. Type shit. Type shit. Type shit. You know what I mean? So I don't so I don't know. But I think, man, I don't I don't know, bro. I, I don't honestly I don't know how you would how would you would attack it if you don't know. Label them first. Label them first. Let's yeah. sit down. Let's make a plan. Yeah. Let's let's write down what the intimacy, what the levels of intimacies are, where we're lacking, how we could do better. Let's put it on paper. Like that would that would be a, that's how I would start. Let's put it on paper. Let's see what it looks like. Where how we could do better or or board something visual that we both mm-hmm. could see. All right, and maybe like a graph, maybe a pie graph. Oof. So you can actually see. You lead recreational intimacy in your house. Yeah. 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 Come on. <laughs> I'm always doing some fun shit. Come on, I'm always doing some fun shit. But I would I would do it like that so we could visually see. And we oh, Jess, okay, well, we need more of the pie yep, here. Yep, yep. Cause we all could agree, we all could visually see that and say, you right. We right. We need and cause truth be told, you may be like, oh, we're hitting all cylinders, right? And you're oh. like, oh, but we still gotta add more to that. And that's what we did. Yep. When we went through everything, we like, we are in, we we're physically intimate, but like we kind of actually do all of these other ones. More so, like we can't, we could pour more into there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, hey, run, run them through me. Let me run them through me. Like pause, pause, pause. <laughs> hey, run them through me. <laughs> tell me the, tell me the intimacies again. Okay, so we have intellectual intimacy, professional intimacy, financial intimacy, spiritual, emotional, physical, and recreational intimacy. Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, so part two. We gotta do a part two. I'm down. Part two. I'm down. Our part two. Let's run that. Our show. We'll see y'all later. <laughs> I don't wanna never sit and go and make a plan. Knowing my mother getting old now, I got no time. Gotta keep a couple for the road or else get left behind. Yeah. To the hundreds, pledge allegiance, I stand. I'm gonna pull a four in the fucking white sand.